We're continuing the train of shitting on digital platforms that are extremely beloved and are going to get a bunch of people going, Thank you, you're dead, you're bad, bad What about all the other ones? There's other videos where we're shitting on the other ones. Go look at them. And look at the one that you are addicted to as well, because that's why you're getting that response. And this one, obviously, creme de la creme. How could I forget? I was just warming up. Obviously, the seventh layer of hell. Reddit might be in hell, but right in the center, where Judas is getting continually munched on by the 666 beast is Twitter. Easily the worst, because the worst human beings imaginable are journalists, and journalists control Twitter. They're the ones that exchange all of their information and don't actually do any work anymore and be like, did someone do some work today? Yep, 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 okay, we'll just repeat that. That's what happens there. Now, obviously, I probably don't have to tell anybody here about how shitty Twitter is. If anybody actually is defensive of Twitter, I understand people being defensive of Reddit. But to be defensive of Twitter, it is another level on Reddit. There is an echo chamber that is so prevalent within Twitter. Obviously, blue checks, worst human beings imaginable. Let's just break them down very quickly. It is a bunch of people that are from the upper class that are pissed off that they aren't respected and loved like they were promised by mummy and daddy. And so instead, they spend their life ripping down anybody who is succeeding. And they do it out of pure spite because they're not there themselves. And they know deep down that they're not good enough. Yeah, any of you watching right now? You're not, are you? No, because you can't handle the truth. You can't though, can you? You're weak, shit, low-class human beings that were born into high society. And it tears me up inside. It is actually something that really angers me. (laughs) Anytime I ever see somebody that gets ahead in life, doesn't deserve it, and then just sits on this sort of gold-class doll for the rest of their life, like people in the journalism industry do, there is no way that you earned your position in journalism. It is always as a result of, ah, yes, (coughs) I had sex with your mum in the 70s. There you go. Right? So, Twitter, if we break down the type of person that is there, it is another level of being on Reddit. So, in Reddit, you are a cult member and you are looking up to this invisible number of karma points. It is a cult, isn't it? Just being like, one day, you will get enough karma points to ascend to Reddit heaven. (coughs) A.K.A. the top search. Uh, but when you are on Twitter, it is a bunch of people that aren't talented enough to garner an audience, all vying to garner an audience amongst themselves. So God has become themselves. This is the difference between the two. In Reddit, it is a bunch of nerds that like anonymity, but they also have a very bitter outlook on life and they need to spread the poison amongst themselves, but that's okay. The people on Twitter are entrusted with directing society and they want to be known. They want to be little starlets, but they can't be, can they? No. Oh, that's unfair. That's unfortunate, isn't it? So it is this endless thing of a bunch of people around themselves just being like notice me notice me hello hello and so every like that you get on there and this is the really sinister thing that you learn about twitter what they are doing is this sort of reciprocal response of if i like this tweet you're going to like my tweet and so because everybody knows everybody else and there's just like this little camp that sits amongst themselves. They're always liking their own posts and it's got nothing to do with the consistency of what they're saying. Nothing to do with that. At least on Reddit, there is sort of, if you think about it, in those bubbles, you're being consistent with the thought. That has nothing to do with it. It is just this thing of like, oh, did they repost me? Okay, I'll repost them back. It is so bad for the human mind. I've never felt worse. Have you ever felt worse than anything of being on Twitter for even five minutes. It's a horrific feeling. And this is these people's day to day. Can you imagine if you were one of the people that woke up first thing in the morning, blurry eyed, oh, good night. Oh, I see a bird in front of me. Oh, it's Twitter, yay. These people have a miserable existence. And as I pointed out before, I couldn't be happier about that. But 
if we are just to reflect on that for a moment, the fact that the people that are supposed to be the guardians of democracy, once they realise that there are other platforms there, they try to make that their own platform. Now there's other people encumbering on it. So they're sitting there in this ever smaller, diminishing bubble of pure ego of people that are very egotistical to begin with. I just did an interview with PR Guy and he was saying exactly what I was saying, which is that these people have the thinnest egos on earth. There is a reason that my videos do so popular of me shitting on blue check journalists and it is because you read their views and to any normal human being, you sit there, you read it and you think, you're fucked. But in their little world, They're just always enabling one another. So there's nothing really here for me to say, you need to get off Twitter. I'm just saying, as a matter of course, it does get worse. It definitely does. We have found number one gold medal by a mile. It's like Usain Bolt with whoever the rest of the other Jamaicans he's racing are. Everybody knows Usain Bolt. Twitter is the lowest form of existence. And what is happening there is when people are just writing their stupid inane thoughts and getting liked for it, and then they're writing for more stupid inane thoughts, can you imagine if you were addicted to just writing down stupid inane thoughts? I realize it in myself. I am addicted. I spend probably 12 hours a day on my computer. You know what I'm doing that entire time? I'm writing scripts. And then the rest of the time I'm reading, so I'm coming up with material for this channel and I'm coming up with material for my stand-up show. That's what my day is. It is regimented like that. These people's days, days, lives are regimented to please someone like this, please someone like this, please someone like this. I had a thought, I had a thought, please. So scary. A pure waste of human potential. But I suppose the way that we can just bring this around to everybody else is everybody's doing it in some capacity now. That is the problem with social media. This is what I think is very, very unsettling about it, uh, is that it unfortunately has its benefits, but it also really, really stokes narcissism. Because, and this is something that I've obviously had to grapple with a lot and been very conscious of since the beginning of starting Friendly Geordies, is that once you put up a video, it is addictive. It's extremely addictive. It's just like it got so many likes. And if you get a lower level of likes, you feel worse that day. And if you get more likes that day, you feel better. That had to be eliminated. Had to be eliminated because after a while, and this is the way that you get through that, I think, is that you think of life as Simon Sinek point, infinite game. If you think of it as an infinite game, the win is posting something. That's the win. Then you forget about it. Then a few weeks later, you go back and look at it and you think, oh, okay, that one didn't get that many likes or, oh, that one did get so many likes. But it's terrible. It is a terrible, terrible habit to sit there and just be like, is it going up or is it going down? Is it going up or is it going down? That is what is happening to those people on Twitter, on crack. They have it so much worse than everybody else. So much worse. Not that I feel sorry for them remotely, and I'm glad that they live in this digital hellhole of their own making. (laughs) It really gives me a lot of joy. I need you to think about that in your own life, though. Because there is an inherent point of human existence where you do naturally, obviously, look for approval in others. That's just part of being a human being. You are always looking for approval. You are approval-seeking behavior. The more successful people in life are the people that just decouple themselves from approval to the point that it becomes extremely unhealthy like me and don't seek any approval at all. And so now I just walk around in this Kmart jumper the whole time, just smelling like uh, Greek man sweat. And But I think that, you know, it is a much healthier place to be than somebody who is constantly sitting there looking for approval. Because you know what you see, say, I don't know, like, Mm, what's her name again? Mikhail Tesla or something? No, that's not it. But, you know, that chick that lives in the Gold Coast with the huge lips and the arse implants. Every time you look at her, you can see, damn, there is someone who is addicted to likes. Always this, always. Like, it has to do, like, several outfit changes a day. It is debilitating. And Twitter is just another example of that. But 
as you see, and everybody gets really smug about it when they look at Twitter, you're only being smug about it because that is the most extreme example of all of these people that have wasted their human potential and do no actual work and diminish democracy in the process. It's very easy to look at that. But just know that in all social media, that is happening to a lesser extent, admittedly. Not by much, though. And this is the worst thing. They might be degrading democracy, but you spending your time on social media is degrading the economy, is degrading human potential, is degrading life on Earth. Sound epic? It is. Yeah. The the net and social media is a brilliant tool, but it is a terrible, terrible master. Which one are you on? Would you like to know how to get off it? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that's to sign up to Jordan Shanks. Yes, I do have the answers behind a paywall, and I'm not going to give them to you here. Suck it. In. But that should be enough. That is the first point. There is a five-step process to getting off of any addiction. The first one, obviously, is acknowledgement of the addiction. And the second one is that you need to replace the addiction. The third one is that you need to come up with some sort of disassociation tool and I've just done a really good piece on that behind the Jordan Shanks paywall, so you should check that out. And then the next ones, obviously, are instilling the habit and making the habit easier to put in front of you. These are all steps. The one that I recently did on Jordan Shanks, I honestly think, incredible tool. That is the thing that got me off of smoking. I really don't crave it anymore. When I smoke now, it is to make the other person feel comfortable. That's it. I swear to God that is it. And it is because of this simple trick that you can employ in your life and you can find out what it is for a low, low price that is way cheaper than cigarettes and way better for the rest of your life anyway because it is a way to break terrible habits over and over again. Surefire, I'll see you there. I will, won't I? You're going to do it, right? Well, if you're not, fuck you.